Earlier I spoke with Douglas Paul, he's the director of the Asia program at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. I asked him how do recent developments such as Syria and the DPRK affect this summit? Well, it probably factors in more on the American side than on the Chinese. The Chinese is trying to set up a series of consequences. Uh, first and foremost, this is a big parade for Xi Jinping on the way to his apotheosis as the leader of the Communist Party later in the year. And so it's one of the big events where he stands in the sunlight and gets lots of pictures. Uh, for Trump, he's got to respond to the media inquiries. He's got to re show that he can govern. He's having trouble proving that in his job. And so he's more uh, in need of responding to this and that emerging crisis. Uh, both of them really need to set out a, how they're going to accomplish the things they want to accomplish over the next few years. The first thing is to get to know each other, try to form some basis of trust, or at least a workability, if not trust. It's interesting because you have uh, uh, you have the. Chinese dream that she's talked about. You've got Make America Great, which Trump's talking about. So each one playing their, to their domestic audiences. Um, so is that a conflict in a sense? Because each one has to kind of stake out a certain position, or can they find common ground? I think there's an effort to find common ground. It was symbolized when Secretary of State Tillerson went to China and in his own hand wrote out the words that come from the Chinese slogan about the kind of relationship they want with the U.S which is one of no conflict, no confrontation, win-win, and mutual respect. Tillerson has set it out himself. The Chinese have heard it. They've had their officials in to see uh, Trump privately, no fanfare. And Trump was very accommodating in those brief encounters with uh, Chinese officials. So the Chinese think that this is going to be all right from their perspective. And they'll be able to have two very strong leaders with very different personalities manage to come out of this uh, smoothly rather than in terms of uh, some kind of political fist fight. It's interesting. I spoke to somebody who's sat in on these uh, sessions over the years, and he said, uh, if, if the U.S. comes out and publicly they're very strident, chances are in private that wasn't the case. Uh, that, that, that the performance that you put on for the cameras is different than what you see behind the scenes. What can we, I mean, we won't really be that fly on the wall, but what do you suspect? Uh, is it going to be a really tough conversation in some respects? Well, the, the uh, administration spokespeople have been saying they want to lay down deadlines and goals. And the Chinese will be very um, touchy about that. When Tr uh, Xi Jinping came to meet with uh, Obama at the Sunnyland Summit out in Palm Springs, the hope there was that the short sleeves and the casual atmosphere would relax everybody. But Xi Jinping really stuck to the script. And as time passed in subsequent many meetings between Obama and Xi Jinping, they got frostier and frostier as time went on. Uh, so the first few minutes, I think, will really make a difference if they can sort of get off script and start talking about, in Xi Jinping's case, hey, do you know how hard it is to govern a land of 1.3 billion people? Do you know how I have to feed these folks at, and what the prices are in our relations with our various neighbors when we have to make decisions? And then see, Trump can say, well, you know, I've I've been elected the way I've been elected and I've made promises to the American. If they can understand where each is coming from, what he needs, and maybe where their red lines are that you shouldn't cross, that would be a pretty successful 24 hours of meetings.